Hey, what's good everyone? Brody here, and today I'm going to show you guys how I produced the song I Am The Edge by Wicked Face Springs Eternal, produced by me and Rem Ghost. So it started off with a guitar loop that Rem sent me. I'll solo that out here. Love the melody, love how it sounded, love love the how like kind of dark and in the background, I guess, the recording of it was. Very moody. But I wanted to kind of accentuate that moodiness. So what I did was I half timed a lot of the stems of it. Well I yeah, every every stem of that I half timed. So the end product was this. And then we have this layer on top. And then lastly, this part, this lead that comes in on the hooks and like second part of the verse. So all together we get this very haunting, very dark, cool sounding and then I wanted to kind of up the eeriness a bit so I added some synths that I kind of heavily processed as well so we start off with there is I made this kind of sign lead that never never shows up in the beat but it becomes a basis for the rest of what's it called the rest of the song so we start with this guy Just um, nothing in, in particular. I just wanted a starting point to kind of chop up and sample. So I added some, took that, added some shaper box um, distortion along with some um, chopping rhythmically. It's a trick I'd like to do a lot with this pattern. Did some EQ, some delay, compressed it, some more EQ, and then we turned that to this. Kind of percussive. The distortion kind of like going up and down creates this cool pulse. And then from that same sign lead, we make this lead as well, this synth tone. Kind of turns to like a pedal tone. I ran it through, firstly, little Alter Boy, just formatted it up and uh, blended that in. I'll, I'll show you from the start. So we got. I love Little Alter Boy. Um, I've explained this in some of my other videos, like uh, my fell victim tutorial, for example. Um, Little Alter Boy, when you put it on things that aren't entirely monophonic, like there's some reverb and delays and things on this sound, when the multiple notes hit little altar boy at the same time it starts to freak out and i really like the artifacts that it makes so i added that some chorus from the half time then i just brightened it a bunch with some eq now let's see here and then the other synth tone we have is starts off from i like showing the starting points of these to kind of see like how I designed these synth tones, if that makes sense. I do a lot of my processing with effects post and not within the synthesizer themselves. So there's this sound, which I believe is just like a, yeah, it's expand, just like a choir, Mellotron sounding choir. Added some reverb. This preset on FabFilter Pro R, I really like rhythm guitar wide. It pretty much just makes the sound feel like it's in a room, makes it a bit wider, some more stereo depth. Some high-end exciting. Delay. EQ. But then I take that and, as always, I half-time it. So combined with everything else, it just makes a lot of cool textures. 
I didn't want this. I didn't want this beat to be very melodic. I wanted it to be more ambient and moody, and leave a lot of space open for vocals. Hence, a lot of the half times and simple melodies and things. So yeah, all together, if we take all of the layers of synths, oh, there's one more. What is this one? Oh yeah, that's just the that synth that I just showed you by itself. So if we take all of those together along with the guitars, that is the melodic section of the beat. Love how that turned out. Then what else do we have going on here? So many beat tags. In one mile. Gotta represent. <laughs> then we have, um, let's see here. I'll just kind of solo out the whole of the drums. I went really spacey with the 808s in the verses to kind of just contrast the hook and get a lot of room. I love that hat. A lot of a lot of cool textures. Let's see. And then we go into the hook here. And then in the hook, we switch from the shorter um, Zay style 808 to a long plug, kind of longer sustained 808. I like doing that between sections because it makes the one that's longer feel a little bit heavier, harder hitting, I think. That really varies per beat, but in this situation, I really think it did accentuate it. Because when we go back to short. Cool, so let's dive into the specific sections of the percussion. Uh, a lot of cymbals and risers and downfalls. All these are Garden Ave sounds. The riser is from a curtains kit. The white noise is from Taylor's kit. And then the symbol is from mine. I just feel like it's a it's a subtle thing, but it adds a lot of momentum to drum parts and anticipation to a new section. Let's see here. The drums, I really I, I don't know why. Between this and Forbidden Door, I've realized I love um sending Wicca um drill or drill inspired beats. I don't know why, it just fits so well. I think it the moodiness goes really well with this drum style so we have the aura hat from my kit that i used in the aura beat as well and it's just doing a typical typical pattern for drill it's another drum from my kit i like this perk a lot because it's super wide you hear it left and right and it's kind of an organic sounding too I tried to go pretty organic with the drum sounds in this. Uh, I'm not sure what caused me to do that. It just felt right. It just felt like it fit the mood and made it a little different than your standard drill beat, you know? In the intro, we have my the organic snare from my library. These are all labeled here so you can see what samples I'm using. But I love to pitch down. Yeah, I pitched down two octaves, the sample, just to make it kind of in the background for this section. And then the organic snare regular pitch is in behind the clap and the hook. I like to do that to give the hook clap more emphasis. So we have verse. Eight oh eight, the kick drum to go along with it. I haven't used kicks in a while, but for this one specifically, I felt like Again, to emphasize the hook more than the verse, I wanted to put a kick on the hook so those 808s hit a little harder. Got my open hat. Pretty simple. I am putting a um, bit of a bit crusher on it to make it a little more lo-fi and in the background. And then again, from my, my older loop kit, I use these samples all the time. It is, they're actually right here on my desk. Um, or one sec, let me grab them. A shaker and a tambourine 
that I um, took from the breathing backwards actually and I wanted to use them to record more organic percussion in my music but I wound up recording them like one time and then I just use that sample and chop it a ton and that makes it into a ton of my beats I'll show you so the shaker also running it through a um, bit of bit crush same with a tambourine. I love the little um, flourish at the end. If you listen to that, if you listen for it, you'll hear that in a lot of my beats. The because it's just this sample that I edit. Sometimes I'll bit crush it. Sometimes I'll distort it. Sometimes I'll throw it through Shaper Box or chop it up like I would a break beat. Then use a tambourine. All together, we have that. I think the only drum sound I didn't show is this one, the cone hat. Let's see here. I have, it's got a lot of processing. I have it half timed for the verses, and then when it comes in, not half timed, just full force in the hook. Here's how it sounds normally EQ out some lows, widen it with micro shift, bit crush it, give it a little more bite, EQ it, balance it out. Again, I think I'm all, I'm drawn to super stereo sounds. I like I feel like when I make my beat have a super wide stereo feel, it lets the middle be wide open for um, vocals and things that the artist wants to do on top of it. Also, aside from this one being wide, I just love the sample. It's so like weird sounding. So yeah, as a whole, the drum, the drums, I love how they turned out. Pretty standard Brody drums, but very effective, I think. Try to go for less is more with the beat like this. So like there's a lot of layers, but they're all kind of blending together and it's not too much conflicting sounds or rhythms. And yeah, essentially that, that sums it up. That's the, that's the beat. That's all the melodic section of it. The drums, a little bit of an explanation of like how I got there, how the, how the beat turned out. And if you made it this far, I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed this song as well as the rest of Full Moon Mystery Garden. Shout out Wicca Phase Springs Eternal. So happy to be a part of that. So happy to be a part of Garden Avenue and see this album finally be released. It's been a long time in the making. The first song that released from it, Aura, was a beat that Taylor and I made back in 2020. So it's been a couple years now. It feels great to have it out. It feels great to talk about these. Expect more videos alongside this one too for the other songs that I produced, and I'll explain how those came to be. Um, also, quick plugs real quick. I'll have in the link, or in the description, a link to my Discord, a link to my Patreon, and then you know the rest of my socials, you can find me there. would love to hear your insight on this, hear your opinions, get everyone hanging out, talking together. Yeah, good stuff. Appreciate you for making, this, making it this far. Peace out.